Isolation Station. Happy Friday, everyone. It's 7 pm. I'm George Lawton, and you're, of course, listening to Isolation Station. That's right, it's the weekend. Have you got any outrageous plans for the two days ahead? Perhaps you're going to uh, treat yourself to a brand new puzzle. Finish off Tiger King on Netflix? Break some Lego figures and build them back up again? I mean, the possibilities truly are endless. Not only is it the weekend, but there are a veritable feast of national days ripe for the picking today. We've got National Chocolate Moose Day, National Tweed Day, National Film Score Day, but ladies and gentlemen, today is also World Party Day. And you better believe that we're going to be taking World Party Day very, very seriously. Only the best party hits from now until 8pm. And I'm not talking skanky warehouse rave hits. Oh no, I'm talking Aunt Sandra's 60th at a holiday inn complete with questionable food hygiene Buffy and your cousins that you've not spoken to in 12 years. That is absolutely the vibe that we're going for tonight. So let me know if you've got any plans for the weekend or if there's a party tune that you're just desperate for over on Instagram at isolation underscore radio or the web isolation-station.co.uk You're going to want to stay tuned in tonight because later I have an extremely exciting announcement that you're not going to want to miss. Hell is gone in heaven's ear There's nothing left for you to fear Shake your ass, come over here Now scream I'm a burning effigy Of everything I used to be You're my rock of empathy My Robbie Williams, let me entertain you. Right, team, I think that Auntie Sandra's 60th birthday bash at a holiday in just off the M4 is going down an absolute treat. Uncle Derek has uh, had a couple too many shandies and is on the uh, chirps with Cousin Ben's new girl. The DJ is flicking through his selection of Now That's What I Call Music CDs and the tension on the dance floor is palpable. Will the next one be a banger? 
Well, I'm happy to say that DJ Dave's mobile disco has unleashed an absolute banger onto the holiday and function room. Auntie Julie even spilt her pina colada, she's so giddy. Right side, the killers. Isolation station. Righty ho. So a few days ago, we spoke about Matt Lucas's genuine banger, "Thank You Baked Potato," where he uh, distributed social distancing advice through the medium of a singing, anthropomorphic baked potato. I mean, Twitter went absolutely mental for this. They genuinely couldn't contain their excitement. It really is the little things that get Twitter going in this current climate. But just when everyone thought things couldn't get any better, Lucas throws Twitter another curveball, which is well and truly smashed out of the park. Turns out the legend that is Matt Lucas has released a properly mastered version of the tune for purchase and streaming on all of your favourite platforms. I mean, it's only right that we give it a listen. Listen to what potatoes say. 
Wash your hands and stay indoors. Thank you, Baked Potato. Only visit grocery stores. Thank you, Baked Potato. And if you want to have a better day, you must listen to what the Baked Potato say. Keep your distance, make some space. Thank you, Baked Potato. Remember not to touch your face. Thank you, Baked Potato. And if you want to have a better day, you must listen to what the Baked Potato say. Potato. I mean, just incredible. Plus, as if he didn't like the fella enough, he's donating all of the profits to Feed NHS, a not-for-profit aiming to raise money to help feed NHS workers. So I did a bit of digging into this not-for-profit, and what I found made me very, very happy. The campaign has actually been set up by Matt Lucas, one of the most incredible comedy character actors of our generation, as well as Damien Lewis, incredible thespian and all-round talented fella, Helen McCrory, the legend that is uh, Draco Malfoy's mum, and uh, John Vincent, the founder of Leon, a.k.a. the creator of the best method of getting halloumi into my body. I'm not sure that there are many groups of people that I could love any more than that. Also, fun fact about Damien Lewis, he once offered me a Malteser. I was shadowing the lighting designer on a show that uh, he was working on in the West End a couple of years ago called The Goat or Who is Sylvia, and during the tech, he casually approached me saying, Care for a Malteser, George? I'm sure he thinks about me most days. Please do stream and download the song, it would be incredible to get it to number one. Right, as much as we love baked potatoes, we need to head back to Aunt Sandra's 60th at the Holiday Inn, and boy, oh boy, tempers are beginning to flare. Turns out that Aunt Maggie has uh, threatened a divorce with Uncle Richard because he took the last pig in blanket from the buffet. DJ Dave needs to get a tune on before things take a turn for the worst.
off for the limbs. Party Rock Anthem, LMFAO. Not many people know this, but LMFAO actually stands for Like-Minded Ferrets Are Overweight? Isolation Station. Okay, so over the past few days I've talked to you about the rabbit hole that I found myself falling down in my internet exploits. Specifically, musicians' second or first careers. Not only have we spoken about members of the Welsh band The Automatic going on to study law and computer science, but yesterday we discovered how before Jack White of the White Stripes fame made it into the punk scene, he worked as an upholsterer, consequently earning uh, the title of one of my genuine heroes. I quite enjoy this segment. I find it rather interesting. If you don't, please let me know and uh, I'll shut up. But today's second uh, career tale comes from None other than Mark Feely. Yes, yes, the Mark Feely from Westlife. You may be surprised to hear that Feely is, in fact, still attending festivals, but not with a band, or as a solo artist in that matter. Instead, he works uh, flogging crepes out of a van. He's released some solo stuff recently, however, his 2015 release failed to make it into the charts, uh, making the likelihood of witnessing Mark taking to the stage less likely than him flogging you a Nutella crepe from a van window. He told the Mirror, People are flabbergasted at the fact that I work in a van making crepes. It's my business and I love it. I love festivals, so why not? Uh, I deliberately didn't do the Irish accent there because I know for a fact there's some Irish people listening. Didn't want to get more people tuning out that already, uh, that already have tuned out. But I do feel like uh, this is just me discovering more music artists to add to my potential soulmate list. Right, now back to Aunt Sandra's 60th. I've received word that the DJ is incredibly excited at the fact that we've been discussing Westlife. In fact, as we speak, he's whipping out his Now That's What I Call the Best of the Millennium CD, frantically scanning the track list. It only takes a couple of seconds until he excitedly cues up this, no word of a lie, banger. Much to the disappointment of the cousins at the back of the room who were hoping for some Stormzy. Uptown girl. See, I snuck the accent in. As long as 
God, my friend Eloise has just texted in, reminding me of something I did never want to be reminded of in my life ever again. I, I once dropped my friend Holly off the stage in primary school to this song. Oh, God. Thanks, Eloise. Well, sorry, folks, it's all turning a bit messy over at uh, Sandra's 60th shindig in the Holiday Inn off the M4. I'm not sure that second cousin Fiona is used to being up past nine, and the uh, gin has definitely got to her. She's been crying into Uncle Derek's shoulder whilst... uh, Because uh, Westlife Uptown Girl used to be her ex-husband Steve's favourite tune. He even had a signed limited edition copy on vinyl. DJ Dave is desperately trying to perk everyone up with some dance floor fillers. He has a special request from uh, great-grandma Ethel with this next one. Apparently, they play it at Zumba. Shake it off, tea swizzle. Plenty of requests coming in for Sandra's 60th shindig at the Holiday Inn. I've passed your requests on to uh, DJ Dave of Dave's Mobile Discos, and he has agreed to play this next one for Mike Peterson. Hi ho, silver lining, Jeff. Say it. 
Jeff Beck, Hi Ho Silver Lining. Requests are still flooding in for Auntie Sandra's Holiday Inn Disco. And the next one has come from Katie and Dinah. You sexy thing, hot chocolate. thing hot chocolate we've had a request for oops upside your head but sadly that one has been vetoed due to the requirement for physical contact can't maintain your two meters sorry don't worry though disco dave will be back very shortly for more disco hits isolation station now It's not yet time for the good news segment of the show. However, I've got to say, this news is pretty great. So, you know the uh, kids' book, The Gruffalo? Of course you do. Everybody knows The Gruffalo. It's even now a film, and I believe a ride at Chessington World of Adventures. I mean, fair play, it is absolutely exceptional. Also, did you know that the author of The Gruffalo, Julia Donaldson, also wrote Room on the Broom? Another addition to my soulmate list, I believe. I actually read uh, Julia Donaldson's Wikipedia before the show, and there's far too much to talk about on here, but definitely give it a read. She's actually had a pretty fascinating life. Anyway, slightly sidetracked there. 
Julia Donaldson, along with artist Axel Scheffler, have drawn their characters practising social distancing to help children understand the regulations. The characters are seen keeping a safe distance from each other and helping the vulnerable with their shopping. They've created a few panels that I highly recommend that you check out. One of them says, uh, All right, said the Gruffalo, bursting with laughter. You go ahead and I'll follow two metres after. <laughs> Exceptional. Another says, Stick man and stick lady stay home in their tree, but they're still keeping fit with their stick children three. <laughs> Joe Wicks is going to be delighted with that one. Right, enough of the Gruffalo. I know what you're really after. An update from Sandra's 60th at the Holiday Inn. Well, you'll be pleased to hear that second cousin Fiona has gone up to bed. But here's the thing. Uncle Derek, don't worry, they're from different sides of the family. He's gone up with her. Safe to say that it's all kicking off in the function room. Mini quiches are quite literally flying. DJ Dave hasn't even noticed the ruckus being made. He's uh, enthralled by great-grandma Ethel's Zumba moves to Taylor Swift. He's determined to keep the beats going. Could Ethel be the one for him? bed and I stumble to the kitchen Pour myself a cup of ambition And yawn and stretch and try to come to life Jump in the shower and the blood starts pumping Out on the streets the traffic starts jumping With folks like me on the job from nine to five Working nine to five What a way to make a living Barely getting by It's all taking and no giving They just use your mind Step on the boss man's ladder But you got dreams he'll never take away In the same boat with a lot of your friends Waiting for the day your ship will come in And the tide's gonna turn And it's all gonna roll your way Working nine to five What a way to make a living Barely getting by It's all taking and no giving They just use your mind Five, the one and only Dolly Parton. She owns a theme park in the US, bet you didn't know that. Right, the Rays have been on. They've requested one for the uh, the cousins stood at the back of the room that aren't a fan of Dolly Parton. It's the weekend. Long 
Blinding Lights, The weekend. The cousins at Auntie Sandra's 60th are very happy to have a tune from this decade. And it is a good bop. Ooh, I'm blinded by the lights No, I can't sleep until I feel your touch Isolation Station So, you may have seen that the National Theatre have started broadcasting shows on YouTube every Thursday night from 7pm. Not a sponsor. They kicked. I wish they were. I wish they were. They kicked off yesterday with uh, with the absolute classic "One Man, Two Governors" by Richard Bean, starring none other than James Corden in 2011. The show's still available to view over the next few days, so I'd thoroughly recommend that you head over to YouTube to give it a watch. I was uh, lucky enough to see the show when it was live in the West End, uh, and of course, uh, watching a filmed version at home isn't quite the same. But um, to be able to provide something like this for free to millions of people, I think, is extraordinary. And what a show to kick off on. I'm not exaggerating by saying that there if there, that there, that there can't be a single person that, that won't laugh a few times during that show. Perhaps it'd be a great psychopathy test. Do you laugh at one man, two governors? No. Psychopath. So in order for The National to broadcast a new show every week, the actors and the entirety of the creative teams had to waive their rights to the productions, which I think is just another case that shows we're really all in this together. It now has over 1 million views on YouTube. That's the equivalent to 1,120 sold-out performances at the National's Littleton Theatre. Plus, that's not even accounting for the fact that I'm sure most people's devices have more than one person watching. Incredible. Now, we're heading back over to uh, Auntie Sardra's 60th. And we've had a request in from uh, Wham fan Amanda in Norfolk. Amanda, I hope you like this one. It's Club Tropicana.
Isolation Station. Oh boy, oh boy. We're in a bit of a pickle here. It's meant to be Shrek Seg time, but uh, things are really heating up over at Sandra's 60th over in the Holiday Inn off the M4. I'm so sorry, guys. There's only one thing for it. We're going to have to have a crossover segment. So, you know how when I last updated you, Uncle Derek went up to bed with uh, second cousin Fiona? Well, Auntie Julie has had enough, and uh, she went to go and find him. 27 incorrect doors later, she finally found the two of them. Now, I don't want to go into the details. This is a family show. However, all I'm saying is that the Shrek Seg tune uh, should tell you everything that you need to know. Uncle Derek, what are you like? You scoundrel. Accidentally in love, Counting Crows. An absolute classic staple to the Shrek segment. Isolation Station. Okay, everybody. It is, of course, now time for some good news. Now, you know by now that I deliver only the finest quality of good news to your eardrums, and today is absolutely no exception. Now, I genuinely don't think that uh, better news than this exists, Uh, so here we go. Pret have released the recipe to their chocolate chip cookies on their social media. This is not a drill, everybody, not a late April Fool's. They've actually done this. If you need to take a moment, that's totally fine. I got rather emotional too. I think we can all agree that this is likely going to solve all of the world's problems in one hit. Now, just in case you're mental and don't like Pret, uh, if this is the case, do feel free to uh, turn me off, by the way. I've, uh, I've got another story for you. And it's another dog story. Only the best here at Isolation Station. So, 71-year-old Rennie Hellman is one of many Colorado residents who have isolated themselves in their homes. Hellman is also particularly vulnerable due to pre-existing medical conditions. 
Hellman's neighbour of ten years, Karen Eveleth, knew that she wanted to do something to help, but she didn't know how to offer assistance. However, in a stroke of genius, Eveleth taught her pet dog Sundance, brilliant name by the way, how to deliver groceries to Hellman's door. Not only has Sundance been delivering food and meals to Hellman, he's also been retrieving her mail from the post box. With Sundance's daily visits to cheer her up in isolation, Hellman is calling the golden retriever her humble hero. Now, I don't think news gets much better than that, does it? Right, we've had a special request in from Peter Baliki. He says that Sandra's 60th wouldn't be complete without the B-52's Love Shack. And do you know what, Peter? You're absolutely right. Jack, the B-52s, an absolute staple to any good mobile disco set. Isolation Station. Well, thank you so, so much for listening again, everybody. I very much hope you've enjoyed today's show. For those of you that are asking about an update on Uncle Derek and second cousin Fiona, they are currently self-isolating together. Meanwhile, Aunt Sandra has vowed never to hold a birthday in the Holiday Inn off the M4 ever again. Pity. I'll, of course, be back on Monday at 7pm. Ooh, I almost forgot about the exciting announcement. Now, Wednesday, next week, 
we will have an actual Hollywood proper celebrity actor on the show. Who is it? Mmm, good question. Tune in on Monday and Tuesday to get to the bottom of what celebrity guest we shall be welcoming into the Isolation Station family. Now, of course, today we did receive the incredibly sad news that music legend Bill Withers has passed away. But just because he's gone doesn't change the fact that his music will leave a lasting legacy, leaving marks upon many now and in time to come. So I think it only makes sense that we close the show out today with one of Bill Withers' most loved tracks. Serves as a reminder that we should be forever grateful for those that love us and that so long as there is love around us, the world's all right. When I wake up in the morning, love And the sunlight hurts my eyes Something without warning love Bears heavy on my mind Then I look at you And the world's alright with me Just one look at you And I know it's gonna be A lovely day have extremely lovely weekends and I very much look forward to being back with you at 7pm on Monday. Isolation Station.